Hi and welcome to Matrix Moments. Today's podcast is titled Market Environment Avi. I'm not sure if this will still be relevant by the time this gets posted because the market's already up 4% yesterday and China was up like 8-10% yesterday. Uh, but you know just taking a step back we did a bubble podcast in July 2021 where we discussed that finally you know this bubble would burst and you know FOMO investing would be gone <clears> and you know some money would be lost but lasting digital businesses will will be here to stay and you know expand over the next decade are we finally there yet so first of all great to be back first uh, podcast i think we are doing in person uh, post uh, a very interesting start to 2022 um, i think we have discussed this before you know the key to forecast is not give a time around it so even a broken clock is right twice a day right so i'm just kidding <clears throat> so the reality is when something will burst or not is unclear. If you remember, I think you and I did the fear post the Allen FS crisis. Yeah. We had done a fear podcast also because the environment was exactly uh, the opposite. The we have discussed before velocity, v velocity, value meaning valuation and volume, volume are the key signs of a bubble. Was it there throughout 2021 globally? Maybe except China? Absolutely. I mean, there is no doubt about it. Um, so I would say gen the bigger question is: Does history repeat itself? Are we um, are we in a situation where uh, a lot of factors are in play that will make things you know potentially correct? Absolutely. But if you remember, second wave people were thinking will become a trigger. This whole China thing will become a trigger. Now maybe the Russia thing will become a trigger. Now we'll talk about inflation it will become a trigger. If we knew the trigger, it won't be a trigger, right? The whole thing about these things is that, you know, uncertain event that gives a negative surprise. Uh, you said markets have already uh, bounced back strongly. You know, if people expect VCs to be able to really actually project the future, uh, we would be doing a different business. But I don't think it's over. And I think today is what we should put a date to it. Feb 1st, Feb 2nd, whatever it is. Um, and probably this will go out in a few days. We'll see where we are a month or two from now. Uh, I'll tell you what's different. There is slowing growth with rising inflation, which means that interest rates are going to be uh, increased. Second, for me, what hasn't played out yet is the behavioral aspect of it. There is a new generation of investors that came in during lockdown of COVID who think that you can only make money in the markets. They haven't lost money yet. By the way, in the correction, they have lost the gains, but they haven't lost principle yet. How will they react when they lose principle, if they lose principle? So, you know, there's a joke in the market, which is because this is a lot about behavioral investing, that you can keep buying the dips till, it, till zero. You can dollar cost average to zero. Don't catch a falling knife. A lot of these comments, which are basically telling you this is human psychology and behavior. And that's where I don't think we have seen a real what is called a capitulation and the capitulation when it happens we'll all know where it feels like the world is over and this was happening in late 2018 um, in, in the market the other point I would say is <coughs> what individual investors do not realize is that they are up against very sophisticated computer programs and people who are doing technical analysis so you may be thinking it's down 10 15 percent I should buy there's somebody who's looking there at the chart and saying at this place it's still a falling knife and at this place a number of buyers will come in right so uh, Warren Buffett says as well says it well you know you can say a stock is down 80 percent or 90 percent what's the big deal and he says a stock that is down 90 percent is down 50 percent from when it was down 80 percent so I think some of that has not yet played out and again today and Friday it looks like it's all turning around, so we'll see how it plays out. But it does look like uh, this inflation, uh, slowing growth, increasing interest rates. I think it's a big deal. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. The markets are always <coughs> volatile, and we may not read the the real, uh, you know, the separating the signal from the noise is always hard. But you made a comment which is that structurally inflation <coughs> is going up. Yeah. Structurally growth is slowing down. Interest rates, however, will you know go up so sounds like the market has to correct right and but why I guess the question is and I, I think in one of our podcasts maybe it was marginal value ad we had covered this 
but you know what people don't understand is the correlation between interest rates and we have all you and i have done it at business school this uh, capital asset pricing model and stuff but very simplistically pe just reverse it p is the price to earnings ratio is e by p which is the yield that a stock is giving you if your risk free rate is 5 6 7% right if it goes up by 1% what is what is the uh, us fed saying five increases four increases of that's 1% 1% on the base of 2% that's a 50% increase your mortgage outgo emis will go up by 40 50% your when you say earnings yield should be correlated to interest rates those pe's have to go down by 30 40% that's what happens with the markets and i do i think people don't understand that how big a deal that is because ultimately money is chasing returns and when returns change in the debt markets and the yields go up um, now the question is what i struggle with is even this is now factored in right so markets always price this in have they already priced in five increases but then the math has to play out because you can't have a 36p i was just reading in the market uh, the other day nasdaq at this level is still 36p mm. and steady state is 27 how far does it have to go 30% down right well we are 13 14% i'm saying after that it's 36 after that yeah. <laughs> wow. okay so not to scare people but uh, i i think that uh, that some of this is not is fundamentals and what i wonder which is why i'm saying i don't sometimes understand this that the smart money starts talking this language but you see markets going up so then the question is is the retail trade taking it up i don't know i'll tell you i think india is different versus the i yesterday the survey estimates came out we will be the largest uh, largest fastest growing economy in the world right uh, i think that's a big deal people will chase chase growth we may be actually pre if i don't know if you saw the revised estimates pre covid the growth rate was revised down to 3.7% covid minus 6.6 this year 9 next year 8 and a half so uh, i think people will look for the heaven uh, of growth and a lot of capex cycle you and i have been working on yeah. some slides a lot of indicators are looking positive government has never collected this much tax yeah. they are going nuts right <laughs> fiscal deficit is down, down. digital i really believe i mean you are in off business you are in bunch of these companies razor pay we have it has inflected like anything so it may be here to stay but recognize that most of the money comes from the top us you know europe largely us so that will be a liquidity driven correction in india my view i don't think it will be a uh, secular you know bear market or anything like that just because growth and a lot of lot of things that are looking negative for others are looking positive for us we had our you were telling me highest ever exports yeah we've been at 250 to 300 billion for 5 6, 5, years. 6 years and our run rate now is 400 450 yeah it's a big deal yeah very big deal what do you think no i think on the uh, i think the framework is simple right if you say 30 35 times p that's you know earnings yield you can do the math it's like sub 3% yeah and uh, uh, if uh, interest rates long term yields are in the 1 and 1/2% range and that yeah. goes up like 100 yeah. bps yeah. it's just normal that the equity markets have but to but look at india we can get if interest rates in india go up we, we even today you can get fds at 6% so what should the pe be hmm. 15 15 16 what is it Yeah, but then 35 think, to 40. But I think people are basically pricing in the fact that we have a growth. very long runway of growth. Growth, growth, growth. growth. So, so if you ask me, the biggest risk for us in India, including in digital, is is this growth real? If this growth is real, we are good, uh, because corporate profits increase at three to four times the GDP. nominal GDP growth rate. So that then can justify a 30 p, 35 p. In our businesses, we are seeing the growth rates. You have been doing. you should talk about the capital efficiency piece also yeah no i think that that data is you know uh, everyone instinctively understands it but if you just think about the amount of capital that <coughs> went into building many of these internet businesses for almost like 6 7 years and then you look at the incremental capital to the incremental gmv the efficiency of that incremental gmv is many times that of the first 
you know, uh, uh, period of time when these businesses were getting built. So, and uh, burn, burn the burn ratios are declining. Companies are actually getting towards profitability. Return on capital characteristics are showing up. Actually, it's a very interesting. And hence time. all the money is shown up. Yeah. Right. No, but I think the 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 other piece of it, which you know, is uh, uh, long term. One, of course, is just overall economic growth. But the other thing is digital growth within that economic growth. And I think it's completely. It's the digitization it, of the economy, right? It's completely within, you know, the realm of imagination to expect that Nifty 50 by 2050 will be 50% tech. Yeah. And uh, if that's the case, then uh, tech will likely grow even faster than the overall uh, corporate profit rate, right? So maybe the volatility of the tech earnings as well as the long-term growth of these tech earnings, not just in India, even global. I mean, India, of course. Uh, but even global, I, Apple, result, Apple results were great. Microsoft results were yeah. great. These are all like trillion dollar companies. So it sounds like tech, there are still large pockets which are, you know, kind of looking good for the long term. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but, you know, taking a step back, like the macro is clear. What about a business like ours? Like some of this is going to, liquidity is going to affect, you know, businesses like ours, right? We are fundamentally a long-term investor and our business is not as you know liquid as you know people who invest in public markets right so so that why should we why should we care about what's happening in the public markets? yeah because our investors care right so our investors for them they they have allocations and rightly so that have come up over a decades of experience that you put this much in private markets within that you put this much in venture capital you put this much in public markets you put this much in debt and this that and you have guardrails, let's say 25 to 30% in each asset class. What has happened over the last year is that the valuations went up so much in private that that 25-30% got blown, went to 40-45. But they have to come back. There is no, uh, they don't have any discretion on it. It's a mandate. It's like a debt covenant. You have to do this. Now, obviously, you don't have to do it overnight, but you have to slowly rebalance. That's called the numerator effect. Then public markets correct now what happens denominator shrinks so what was 35 40 becomes 50 plus so it's not easy for them and if, if you ask me and we talk to some of the investors they are loving the performance of venture capital so much uh, distributions tech is going up but they're like how do we manage this it's like a beast which they cannot you know correct uh, quickly so it does affect uh, actually in my view a slowdown is good uh, if it happens we'll see and we'll talk later, but you know, early stage we plan to continue um, as 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 is. But I think a slowdown is great. But we need to understand that the ultimate source of capital does care, and the ultimate source of capital is you know universities, family foundations, so on and so forth. The other thing is, as interest rates are going up, they also have to potentially increase their debt allocations, mm. right? Because ultimately they are doing a modeling of we need to earn seven eight percent. And the minute the debt, the interest rates are going up, they have to allocate more to debt. And so it does affect ultimately. But slow down understood. Where do you think it will be more pronounced? Will, will it be more late stage, more early stage? Uh, do you think early stage will bounce back? Uh, so I guess, Rajender, if we were not doing this, what would we be doing? We would be doing early stage period like there's no. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, the VCs in the country are living and dying by the country. The people who are investing in later stage are not necessarily living and dying by the country. They, their dollar is fungible. And their dollar, rightly so, will seek. And we've heard this so many times earlier. India is too expensive compared to China. It's too expensive now. What have we heard lately? US public markets have corrected so much that we would rather invest there than here. Why will we take private risk? So later stage will be affected. It is already affected. Some of that will play out over a period of time. That said, if you look for the last six, seven years, there used to be this thing about tourist money, hot money, uh, running away. If you look at, and I'm, I don't mind naming even some of them, right? Whether it's Tiger, which gets talked about a lot, Falcon, SoftBank, Co2, these are all weather people. They, they dial up and down depending on you know, the market conditions, which is also correct, because the, it, their dollar is fungible. But they have now been in the market six, seven years. And if we really believe, and in some cases 15 years, like Tiger, right? 
And if we really believe that the growth has arrived with better business models, I think they'll be back. But there may be a phase they may need to navigate and we need to be respectful of that. Early stage, we are going to continue our pace. It'll be nice not to meet a team on Friday and be expected to give the term sheet by Friday midnight. That's not how this business works. It only, in that situation, it, there's only one answer that ends up, which is, you know, the return goes away. But early stage is here to stay. I think thoughtful founders will find that this is a better uh, environment for them. I'm not hearing why. So for founders, it sounds like doing a meeting on Friday and getting money on Monday is like fantastic. So yeah. how should they be thinking about navigating because this environment? Because investor has invested in FOMO, right? The investor doesn't have conviction. Hmm. You cannot build conviction in a few hours. But what about valuations? Valuations are going to possibly... Valuation, valuation is all notional. I have, I have said this before, or you and I have discussed this before, that valuation is notional, dilution is real. Focus on dilution. By the way, I'm having chats, and I know you've had chats with founders right now saying, in this environment, raise the money you're getting. Don't over-optimize. If the investor has conviction in you, respect that conviction and focus on dilution, raise less, right? So I think that is the better way to navigate. I think uh, it will play out, and there were a couple of articles floating around even yesterday, that these high velocity decisions that have been made also play out badly for the founders. High velocity by the investors, right? So, so I, think, I think long term, if you're building this for 10 years, this is the environment. This is a better environment than the other one. Your competition will, you start a business, five other businesses are getting funded. Same, uh, same. now if you believe you are a differentiated founder, market is not differentiating. Capital is available to everybody, right? Hmm. I would prefer to build, well, first of all, we don't know if this environment will last, but <laughs> I would prefer to build in this kind of environment. And as investors, how should, how should... So the, just backing up, sorry, Rajendra, I was looking at my notes. Uh, I think companies, a bunch of companies have raised a lot of capital. So you are in good shape, don't blow it. Uh, companies are on the cusp of raising capital, raise it very fast. Those who haven't raised, and if they feel they were going to be in the market in three, four months, I think you should test the market now. Otherwise, you will need to go back to the basics that we have discussed in other situations. Uh, focus on your runway, focus on your business model, cut costs. In my view, infinite runway always gets funded hmm. because you control your destiny. And I think those founders should be thinking about some back, uh, uh, you know, the basics. The other thing, maybe it would come up later in m and but I have found, so if you look at the old business houses or industrial houses, I think I used to always say this openly that they don't get it. They, they, they understand the internet is disruptive, but they, and they understand they don't have the cap capability and they want to play, but they want to be bottom feeders, right? They only want to buy distressed assets. Distressed assets only cause you distress and you get monkeys for peanuts, right? I have seen that change and that's a big change. Yeah. All the top, well, Tata is in the, I mean, it's well known they bought a bunch of companies. Geo is well known. Aditya Birla is being talked about, right? It's very good. It's very good. And uh, they are ready to pay market prices. Maybe slight discount to market prices. I think that becomes a real option. PE guys, by the way, there are a lot of value PE seekers. So I think just recognize the change in the environment then navigate towards that. Yeah. I think that's important. And also all amongst the <coughs> sources of capital, one source of capital is of course uh, these large industrial houses who are now becoming more active. The other is actually some of the uh, private equity groups which That's what I was saying, historically only seekers. focused yeah. on profitable companies yeah. and yeah. who kind of in the last three, four <coughs> years basically felt like they were missing out on this growth journey that everyone in the tech ecosystem was seeing. Many of them have actually set up uh, teams in the last year and, and that could be an important source of capital. I think you had mentioned this before, it's very important because the traditional Indian P is not to be named they find it hard to fund negative unit economics. I find it hard to fund negative unit economics. But also negative EBITDA or no path to positive EBITDA. That's changed. The businesses are deeper. 
So that's actually also going to be, and they will be probably licking their lips saying, this is the time for us to get in. Right. And, you know, uh, going slightly off topic, I guess the, 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 the inflection point in everyone's uh, thinking probably was last year's IPO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Zomato, I credit to Dipinder, uh, Nika, even the ones that haven't done well, a balanced market is a good market. Right. If everything was going up, it would be a problem. So uh, I think they have done a service. A bunch of our companies are hopefully going to go public this year. That's the part that worries me the most, by the way, about the market. It's a little bit irritating that we have just started. And this w IPOs can't happen in volatility. Yesterday, some company went public. It's down, it closed down 10%. Right. So that's a little bit annoying. But otherwise, it's here to stay. And actually, m it is a slight digression, but to me, Having lived in the US in the 90s, the question people ask is, is this 99-2000 in India, right? It's not. It's the 95 when Netscape went public, 96 when Amazon, and it's just the first set. Right? Yeah. So it's a long way to go, might be volatile along the way. Uh, through this volatility, any advice for investors? Uh, how should they think about navigating this environment? <coughs> Look, I, I'm an investor, I can't uh, give other investors advice, but I was. I would only say, if the founder and the story was great till December, it can't have changed in January. So keep that perspective. Uh, so I think remember business development introduction. Just you can have persistence in the belief in the person, even if you don't have can't have persistence in your capital support, right? And business development intros, financing intros, budget help, M and A help. So I I think uh, just keep the broader perspective in mind that the story couldn't have changed so badly. It was never that good, and it's not going to be this bad. Yeah. Um, I was just reflecting on something you said earlier, which is India digital story was just taking off, yeah. and uh, uh, you know this IPO market seems to be a little bit you know unclear now. Some stocks are actually you know off fifty percent from their highs, which is you know I was wondering like is this just too much correction? Uh, what do you think the, the the future near future at least holds? You are putting this together in one of the decks, so why don't you tell me? What do you think? <laughs> no, I think the market is, frankly, uh, from a public market standpoint, I think the market will open up. And the reason is, uh, the growth is the growth is real. So if you just look at across the digital digital section, uh, whether it's geo, whether it's uh, you know jam, whether it's demonetization, GST, TikTok, I think that's exit, the key, all of these things are just long-term secular drivers of digital adoption. And that's so going let's from pause consumer there. to Let, let's pause there because I think what is getting missed is that this has been building over five years, six years. It started with Geo, in our view, Demon. It helped the whole payment infrastructure. UPI may be more than that. Uh, GST brought one national market. What else? Um, Jam architecture. We have spoken. Jandhan Aadhar and China app exit. And how much China app exit? TikTok, uh, TikTok adoption, then TikTok ban, right? WhatsApp, this was all building. Then COVID just put it on the next level, right? And I think the digitization of the economy, we are seeing this in razor pay of business, deal share, like so many companies, companies are getting off the ground much faster than we've ever seen. Go quick, Farmart, Captain Fresh, like we can go through so many examples, right? It's because the offline economy has become digital. So if you believe that India is going to grow, digital is going to grow at an order of magnitude uh, higher. But it is still <laughs> irritating because I don't know if the IP I agree with you that at some point, <coughs> tech IPOs may be the only IPOs that, that can happen. In fact, there was a senior banker I respect who said, 2022 may tech you over, right? Because of the growth, because of all these changes everywhere else, things are going up and down. I'm a bit more optimistic. I, I think the India story, at least if these numbers that the government is talking about plays out and a lot of the analysis we've been doing on all the things that are changing, um, I think the India story itself may come back in three to six months. The only, if it is not already back, the only caveat is, like we discussed before, ultimate global liquidity matters. Right? If that gets sucked out, people don't have the money to invest. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I guess the other, you know, theme which uh, seems to have worked in our favor, which 
we've talked about internally is that uh, there seems to be an India versus China story which where the narrative has actually changed. Yeah. Um, you know, for a long time we kind of always looked at, you know, the market there and said, you know, these guys are just, uh, you know, A, ahead and B, just, you know, the gap is widening. Yeah. But finally, it seems like uh, whether it's, you know, COVID, whether it's, you know, manufacturing relocation, whether it's capital reallocation, there's just multiple the drivers down, which are actually working in our favor. crackdown on consumer businesses. I was just reading a report last night that the, the nature of startups and venture capital in China has changed completely, right? Because there's been a big crackdown on consumer. So some of that sentiment obviously helps uh, India digital. The other thing we haven't spoken about is these experienced founders. That's the other thing that's different, right? They have seen cycles. We have discussed this before. Big focus area for us. These are people who have somehow or the other built businesses, whether they were founders or they were L minus one, right? They have seen cycles and they are building businesses for 10 to 15 years. They're playing the long game. And I think that's the thing that if all else fails, makes me the most optimistic. Because ultimately, these people will figure it out. They'll ride it out and figure it out. You know, one asset class which everyone is talking about these days is uh, crypto. It uh, seems to mirror what's going on in the broader public markets. Complete euphoria, like, you know, call it three months ago. <coughs> and now everyone is basically talking about it in a completely different light. Uh, we had also in our look back episode, uh, uh, you know, we had spoken about how we would, you know, explore this space more deeply. Does the recent uh, change in the market uh, worry you? It excites me. Uh, I was very worried till December um, because there was a sense of FOMO internally in the firm and externally and uh, crazy practices were going on. And at some point, we may have felt compelled to play um, in that environment. This is the real environment. I think this will, this sector in particular, it goes out of favor and comes back in favor every two, three years. It's very nice to have a two, one, two-year window. We are, we are going to probably, we are likely to invest more because of this uh, than, um, than before. And you know, one of the, if you read or listen to some of the experts in the crypto world, they say, un unless you have lost money in crypto, you don't have a right to invest. I didn't have a right or we didn't have a, I have lost money now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we have a right to invest. And the second thing is, Volatility is your friend in crypto. You have to just learn mm. to live with that, right? So I think, so that's one aspect. Second, I think it's a bit overhyped, though everybody knows. Um, I'll tell you where I think differently. I was trying to say Web3, crypto, there was Web1, Web2, Web3, so is everything going to move to Web3? And I've now, at least a penny has dropped for me that it's just a new technology. New business models are going to be built on it. And let's take examples. Web1 was PC-based, so you had a bunch of Amazon, this, that. Could you have had Ola and Uber in Web1? No. You needed the mobile, and you needed location-based. Now, with blockchain, and with all that, crypto is a very wide term. You know, and, and it gets confused with cryptocurrency. It's actually Web3. I think a bunch of new business models will come. And this DeFi has been talked about. First it was hype, now it's in depression. But game five, which is gaming and you know tokenization, if there is one place where all of this comes together, two places, gaming and metaverse. And I didn't, when meta was announced, I didn't even get it. I'm like, what is all this? But actually we could be doing some of these things in the metaverse two, three years from now, right? Yeah. So the also penny shout has- out, Also so shout out to our Matrix US colleagues for their investment in Oculus. Yes, which is uh, so early. So yeah, early, so early. Un unbelievable. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, if you look at uh, cloud computing, if you look at 5G, by the way, so people are talking about new applications based on 5G, which didn't exist before, and quantum computing. This blockchain is a technological disruption of similar or higher order, right? But it, it gets more hype than these things. But I have been reading AI based like surgery is this that like especially in health tech lot of stuff around 5G quantum computing lots of stuff. So absolutely huge trend. We will be investing. This is the best environment to invest in when the hype is gone now and the yeah. bubble has burst. No, no. And I know you've been tracking so you should add. No, no. I think the 
the frankly on uh, crypto we should actually get some of our colleagues uh, yeah. to do a podcast Akash on is this. expert we yeah, should do these it. guys are actually uh, you know neck deep in it so i will call on them to do yeah. something there yep. another thought that you know we've been you know kind of uh, uh, thinking about you know how how we uh, play this differently is really how the seed stage explosion and the number of angels the number of micro vcs uh and you know just the way the early stage ecosystem has just rapidly evolved and frankly to some extent it you know it makes it a little competitive for for uh, vcs like ourselves yeah um no and huge respect to our competitors right so if you look at what sequoia has done with surge i think it was transformational i think excel has already always excelled uh in seed now they have a program called atoms so the question is and lightspeed does lightspeed so on and so forth everybody's doing it um then there are all these emergence of micro vcs and angels so what should we do what should we do well it sounds to me like a if you do something you play with the trend and actually back uh, some of these uh, angels and micro vcs and really enable them to succeed and that's also more more in line with what we do right we are we tend to work closely with founders and closer and try to can't say bring the ecosystem together but that is an aspiration right so yeah i think we'll do that some version of that i don't think we can compete with some of our uh, c- colleagues on the seed program because it doesn't play to our strengths i think we work better collaboratively with some of these angels and <coughs> just reading through the notes there was one other topic that we should have covered which connects back to something we were talking about earlier which is at the mna environment um how will that likely play out this year just given uh, that companies have raised so much capital yeah i think it will be brilliant uh, by the way in our own portfolio and this is vikram used to say this 3 4 years ago that in the us if a company and for a founder it's great in the us if a company is doing average it gets bought here you have to be exceptional and win or you know you'd be toast it's changed it's changed and that's great Uh, so i do believe we have discussed before the industrial houses they are real options they are a real option because they have digital fomo they have some level of short and froid watching the current you know okay we were saying the bubble will burst but they are also saying maybe this is the time we should not sit there on our high horse and we should jump in that's a very big deal large companies will look to consolidate um, so i actually believe that the overall maturation of the indian vc ecosystem comes from exits ipos have happened but not much m and a happened last year because capital was very abundantly available this year if if capital is not abundantly available the second pillar will also fall into place and then the you know the fly wheel starts turning fingers crossed excited all right thank you Thanks for tuning in. For more Matrix Moments episodes, you can head to www.matrixpartners.in/matrixmoments. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube for more updates.